All right. Well, here we go. Um, so, last time we completed as shift, I believe. Um, yeah. And uh, as shift. As shift, as opposed to many shifts. Um, you guys, uh, you guys had split the crew a little bit. Um, uh, Percival and Fenna were doing some research back at, uh, the LAPD tower while, uh, Olson and, um, Willem Novak went to the scene of the crime. Uh, you guys need a review of the things you discovered so far, or you guys are pretty good, or? I feel like we're pretty good. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, I think we're pretty good. We've uh, we've been going through our notes and keep, and bringing each other up to date, and eyeballing our um, what's the word I'm looking at? Our opportunities, so to speak. So, um. All right, guys. So, um, I still think that then Percival and Fenna need to get to Wallace because that's time sensitive. Uh, if we miss this shift, then that PRVP knucklehead will she'll be off work. Um, and then I guess. Uh, you guys were going to go to Bullet Bob's, or before we go anywhere, uh, we have a game mechanics question for you, Hachi. Okay. And that is we have. Um, I guess the clues and the evidence say that there's a possibility that she will, Leah will try and um, split, try and get off planet maybe to the lunar colony. Okay. And um, therefore, it would be prudent to have somebody watch the. LA spaceport. Okay. So the question we have on mechanics is can we as blade runners can we um get or ask the police or the air airport or the spaceport security to keep an eye out for? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And then this falls under the uh this falls under the purview of uh, uh, using connections uh, to do what you want. Basically, um, uh, it's it's no different than. Um, hold on, I just gotta find. The, there's actually there's actually a there's actually a chart for that. Um, because you use. Um, I just have to find it, I, and I'm sorry. I, obviously, I didn't expect this question to come up, but um, um, there's a number of things that you can do because you're Blade Runners, you work for the LAPD, and it um, uh, when it comes down to requisitioning equipment or say you wanted to put an APB out on somebody or something, you know, those types of things. And I just need to pull up the rules for it. Um, so bear with me one moment while I figure out where the hell it is. Okay. Cause <laughs> before we, before we split, um, Blade Runner headquarters, uh, the bat cave as it were, we want to do that. Stop it. 
that's not necessarily accurate. Um, there we go, page 183. No, and for, well, that's wrong. The index says it's page 183, but it's not page 183. It's not even remotely page 183. Huh. Well, that is not helpful. Maybe I misread it. Maybe it's 163. So, so doing what you want to do, um, it can be done. It, it, you would have to put a request in, an official request. Uh, it would take, um, you would have to put in a request to Deputy Chief Holden. It would take a shift in order to get a turnaround on it and it would cost two promotion points so the question is who wants to officially put in that request so you're looking at who's got the connections and also keeping in mind having the promotion points to spend I believe Jim's character had very high connections, if I remember correctly. I believe you're correct. I'm going to double check that. Yeah, Jim's not here, so we're spending his XP. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jim has the promotion points available, and he does have a total connections roll of... He's got an A connections with a C empathy, so he would roll a D12 and a D8. Can one of us spend the promo our promotion points and he make the roll off his uh, attribute um, so that we're not spending his character stuff? Yeah, well, and can we spend it like 1-1? One, one yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys handle that. because uh, Do that any way you want because you're a team. Uh, keeping in mind that the two of you that are replicants, if your promotion points go to zero, you have to, uh, uh, there are repercussions for that. Well, let's not have the replicants do that then. I could split it with Jim, I suppose. I have two promotion points. Okay, so you want to use one and he'll use one? Yeah. Well, we almost have to because if we don't, one of us goes to the spaceport and sits on our hands watching for Leia, and she may never come. And it take, kind of takes you out of the game. I guess we're going to have uh, Willem Novak push that role since he failed. That's kind of a bummer. <laughs> Did he fail again? He failed again. Yeah, with a one. Yeah, with a one. So oh. he's going to put in a request um, uh, to uh, Deputy Chief Holden's uh, uh, office. He'll get an answer back in a shift, but um, we'll just cut to it or cut through it. I guess is the best way to put it. Your uh, his uh, his request is going to be denied. And he takes a point of stress, so his resolve goes down to four. Well, that didn't work out so well, did it? No, not so much. So, uh, so Novak makes the call in to, to Deputy Chief Holden. Uh, he waits on hold for uh, for a, a good bit before Holden finally uh, comes on the line, and. Uh, Willem makes the request. I guess, Olsen, you're with Willem. You guys are together in the same car, right? Well, we haven't left. We haven't left the... Uh, we haven't left the um, headquarters yet. Well, you I and Vinna haven't, we're, but Olsen we're and Mac are in the car. Oh, they're in the field. car. Yeah. Yes, okay. we're together in the yeah. field. So, uh, uh, while you're on hold, uh, I, Willem's just... Um, he's getting a little aggravated. You can see he's you know, tapping his fingers, uh, drawing, uh, drumming them on the, on the dash, waiting, and finally uh, he starts talking to, uh, to somebody you assume to be deputy director. He uh, puts in the request saying, you know, we, we have reason to believe that she might want to escape off-world. Of course, you can't see here, you can't see, you can't hear uh, um, 
uh, Holden side of the conversation. Uh, but I, uh, Willem's making his case. It doesn't sound like it's going well. And then finally he says, I uh, says, yes, sir. Understood. And he, uh, he hangs up. He kind of looks over at you all and just shakes his head. No dice. <laughs> and then he's got a, he's got a talent that, uh, I'm going to let him use. Uh, he reaches into his jacket and, uh, lights up a cigarette. So he gets that's a talent. Yeah, it's a it's a talent called uh, called uh, smokes. They'll kill you one day, but once per shift, you can light up to heal a point of stress. Oh. Well, listen, if we're gonna start counting bad habits as talents, you guys should know I'm an extremely talented guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd be amazed how talented I am. <laughs> that's funny. Um. All right. So. Um, so the the plan is that Olson, Bacher, and Willem Novak are going to go to Bullet Bob's Runner Surplus, and Percival and Fenna are going to go to, um, uh, uh, Wallace Corporation. Wallace Corporation to talk to Quell. All right. All right. So Wallace Corporation is way up in Sector Four. We'll start with the two of you. As uh. You two uh, uh, fly across one of the most densely uh, populated parts of the city through Sector 5 and toward uh, Sector 4 where you'll find Wallace Corporation. You know, the rain is picking back up. It's driving pretty hard, at least over this part of the city. Wallace Corporation is, uh, if I can find the stupid thing. Give me one second, I'm sorry. I think I told you guys last time, it's awesome how they put all this stuff in, but it's, um, there's so much of it, and it's not in any sort of order, so it takes me forever to find it sometimes. Um, you know, Wallace Corporation, uh, the, 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 the headquarters makes up several towers that kind of loom over a sprawling skitty, a cityscape. Kind of leads you to believe that Someone has uh, an edifice complex, or uh, <laughs> edifice, com <laughs> or perhaps uh, maybe they're the people nice. who really wield power in L.A. But neither here nor there. Um, these uh, these buildings are still under construction. Uh, even a hundred stories up, there's there's uh, crews hanging on to the sides of the towers, uh, working on various tasks. Uh, as you approach, a call comes into your spinner, and um, a, a voice comes across. Uh, de Detective Special Spinner, please identify yourself and reason for coming to Wallace Corporation. Um, and well. Flip the comms on, and um, uh, we were invited by um, VP Quell. This is um, LAPD um, detectives Fena and um, was it where is our um, Percival? Yep. Excellent, Quality. Detective Finna. You are expected. Uh, VP Quell will meet you on level 67. Uh, please, uh, I'm directing you to Garage A. And uh, a signal gets sent to your spinner, and you uh, see a set of uh, uh, lights come up and start blinking, showing you. Looks like you're landing in a garage pretty much in the dead center of the uh, of one of the towers as you uh, direct your spinner in it's a huge internal garage and it's eerily empty there's only one or two other vehicles here uh, pale golden light shines down from overhead and there's uh, there's lots of shadows and pools of water in the garage uh, there, 
looks like. Is there any place dry in this city? Probably not. <laughs> have you seen the movies? Yes, I have. <laughs> it's raining constantly. Um, except in Las Vegas. Uh, or what was left of it. The... Um, there are there are there's a number of elevators in the garage. Uh, it it looks like you are uh, somewhere in the 30s, so you're heading up to level 57 is where you were directed to go. As we you... will get in the elevator and press buttons. <laughs> and press buttons. <laughs> we press the uh, button for level 57, but right before we get out, we press all the others too. Uh, <laughs> you uh, you enter a large cavernous reception area that's very austere, very clean and immaculate. The the floor uh, reflects light as if it were polished marble, marble. Excuse me. Uh, and there is a single reception desk. Uh, in front of you, uh, behind which is a uh, a hairless man who has a headset on. Um, there is a large doorway. When I say large, it's probably 15 foot tall and about 12 foot wide. There's two of them, one to the left and one to the right. Uh, next to each one is, uh, is a man wearing all black, has a... Uh, has a listening piece in his ear, like an earbud. Um, these two guys, uh, they're definitely cut from the same cloth, and they must be twins, because they look exactly like each other. Uh, but they're wearing black slacks and long sleeve black shirts, uh, each carrying a weapon. As you come out of the, out of the elevator, the, uh, the receptionist looks up and says uh gives you a smile but there's no real warmth in it uh detective detectives fena and percival i presume yes here to see uh vice president quell perfect uh vp quell is waiting for you just oh, I, have there. A con I have a question okay are you recording this oh yes okay Oh, I just, I, well, I didn't know. I just, it, it wasn't because I'm self-conscious. I just thought that in your hurry to get on, you might not have uh, oh, hit the record yeah. button. Yeah, okay. no, I got that. All, straight. all right, let's this. continue. Uh, but VP Quell is waiting for you right through there, points through the doorway to the right, past one of the uh, very large guys. Okay. As you, uh, as you pass through that doorway, um, you enter what is, again, another cavernous room. Uh, it, and to some extent, it makes you wonder why Wallace is, ha, is building this corporate headquarters so uh, to be so huge, because so far, the couple of rooms you've seen have been absolutely gigantic and absolutely empty. Uh, there, this, this room has no decorations. The walls seem to be, seem to be, uh, mahogany or cherry wood paneled, though you're not sure it could be synthetic. Um, the floor is that same almost marble-like, uh, uh, pardon me, black floor. And in the middle of this room is an immensely long table. It's probably 80 feet long with chairs all around it. Uh, lengthwise as you're approaching it. It's a raid, I should say it's a raid lengthwise as you approach it. From the far side, a woman stands out of a chair and starts to approach. I'm going to show you what she looks like. Where is she, where is she, where is she? You guys see Quell? Yep. yep. All right. Very good. Yeah, she looks like her picture in the newspaper. Oh, she was in the newspaper. That's right. So as uh, as she approaches, she uh, 
she comes uh, she continu- she comes towards you guys there is there's no smile there's no anything there's a there's as she approaches there's a slight momentary widening of the eyes just for just a moment and before even that uh, emotion or realization whatever it may be is dispelled um, she says so you are the detectives from the LAPD that's correct and I give her a fake very warm smile smile hmm. she says very interesting that uh, they chose to send the two replicants assigned to this case to come see me. Isn't it just? So, detectives, tell me how things are proceeding so far with your investigation. Uh, and I believe you have two others assigned, uh, both humans, Willem Novak and Olsen Bakker. Is that correct? Yep, that is correct. They are at the scene of the crime, busy investigating as we speak. I see. You seem, and seem to be well informed. Well, Wallace Corporation, the LAPD, even the entire world have a vested interest in being absolutely certain that we come to the truth of this uh, matter, whatever it is, and that we... Uh, well, let's put it this way. It is very important that we clear up any concerns of replicant involvement as quickly as possible. My understanding is that the victim was a Nexus 9 Blade Runner. You, stand, you understand correctly. And, His uh, name is Sandor. Sandor, right. And how are your leads uh, in tracking down the missing Blade Runner. We've got a few leads that we need to follow up, but um, uh, as you could full well understand, it is only the um, first morning that we've got this case assigned, so we're still looking at everything, haven't narrowed down anything. Well, I I certainly understand that. I want to make sure that you understand, uh, Detective Fenna, that the importance uh, in this investigation wrapping up quickly and with the correct solution uh, is of the absolute highest priority. Oh, I fully understand that, of course. Um, and on that note, is there anything you could um, tell us about Leah or any assistance or information that you could give us, seeing as most of, you know, well, all the replicants come from Wallace? Um, yes, uh, Leah, uh, recently, uh, was, um, how should I put this, was recently returned to us from LAPD for recalibration, I believe she failed a couple of baseline tests, and that recalibration, uh, she knows the date off the top of her head, and she gives it to you, even though I don't. <laughs> yeah, well, we know, we know it was it was just a. That's right. It was just a few days ago. That's just right, a couple days service. ago, she returned to service just a couple days ago. Um, so, uh, what? Uh, I'm I'm assuming that if she came back to service, she was uh, your recalibration was considered a success. Um, yes, in the case of uh, Leah, well, in the case of all replicants, we we do not handle the recalibrations here. We handle the recalibrations uh, at our contractor's office, whichever contractor uh, created their memory design uh, actually does the recalibrations. And... Um, uh, our contractor determined that it was uh, that the recalibration was an absolute success. Uh, who? What's the name of your contractor that did this work on Leah? Uh, Lilith Memory Lab. That. The. What's that? Um. 
that would be uh, Tyrell's niece, Lilith, correct? Uh, yes, Lilith that Tyrell, still that's lab? correct. That is absolutely correct. Um, so yes, we're, we're, uh, that's interesting. Um, and just to confirm, Lilith has her own offsite offices. They do not contract in building, in house. Uh, that is, that is absolutely correct. Yes. And sure, her lab is in, um. You know, the other day, I made a point of going across the entire map and locating every single point of possible interest so that I knew where it was, and now I don't remember where any of them are. <laughs> um, Lilith Memory Lab. That's, let me see. that's why they make things called pen and paper. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I appreciate you uh, pointing that out. Uh, my... my uh, Obvious shortcomings. You know, analog. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's in sector four. I apologize. So it's oh, so it's actually relatively nearby. I don't see it on the map, but it's in sector four. That's interesting. It is not on the map. So how did you know it was in sector four? Uh, it's somewhere. It's written down somewhere. Description. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So anyway, I'm sorry, back to the discussion. Well, uh, when you say she failed her baseline a couple times, um, is there a relative degree of seriousness to a failure or is, is it, could it be, is there some threshold and they just, she just exceeded the threshold? Uh, as well as a uh, as a replicant uh, yourself, um, certainly a failure of a single baseline test does not usually cause for recalibration. However, failure of a second baseline test without having passed a baseline test typically would be a cause for for uh, recalibration. Um, I see. We understand that as replicants, and, and the UN, of course, understands this as well, but as, as replicants are put into service and begin to have their own experiences, uh, the baselines will occasionally vary. That is, of course, the reason why we have memory implants in order to help uh, offset that amount of variance. But a failure of two baseline tests in this period of a couple months would be uh, I, a concern. Since we are here, I've just got two questions, or, or one in general, basically. Um, any recent encounter or problem with the um, anti-replicant empathy movement or the pro-replicant resistance movement? Um, nothing that I'm aware of beyond what you might read in the papers. I think that is really it from our side. Anything else that you um, would like to ask or impart to us? Wallace Corporation is expecting this case to be wrapped up quickly. And again, with the correct conclusion and Wallace Corporation is prepared to offer whatever resources your investigation needs to help make that come to fruition uh, keeping in mind that if we cannot complete this quickly and with the proper collusion, uh, conclusion the end result could be unfortunate of course, I fully understand. And um, to that point, um, if you don't mind, would you authorize Lilith to share any information around Leah with us? And we can 
have a discussion with her with all the paperwork behind us already. It would definitely speed things up. I will certainly put in the call to Lilith Labs as soon as you leave. Appreciate it greatly. Um, you know, replica resistance movement, that was, um, you know, that's a name that of an outfit uh, that goes back a ways. It uh, brought down the old Tyrell Corporation or helped, um, of which Wallace was the beneficiary. Ultimately, the question I have is, uh, has Wallace seen any activities uh, of any anti-Nexus groups um, against Wallace in particular and, or any, and any Wallace employees? Not at this time. Wallace Corporation works very hard to protect its assets, including its people. Okay, well, um, as Detective Fenn has said, we've, uh, we're, we're following up a, a number of leads and we're just, we're collecting information right now. The investigation's early, so, um, We'll, we'll, uh, we will keep Wallace uh, Corporation apprised of the investigation as we uh, have information that we can share. That would be most excellent. Thank you very much, Detective Percival and Detective Fenna. Nod and uh, smile and turn around and leave. All right. As you do so she uh she turns and and goes back to her chair at the end of the table you notice that there's nothing on the table she just sits there i have one question sure um this is not a game question all right. Um, as a Nexus 9, would I be able to recognize another Nexus 9, or does that take an observation role? Um, the, it's a little bit of a complex answer. Um, anyone, anyone can recognize a Nexus 9 with an examination of the right eye, a Nexus 8 or a Nexus 9. Right. With an examination of the yeah, right I remember eye, which that requires part. no role. If you just wanted to be able to tell without doing a physical exam, then it would be an observation role. Well, we were there talking to her face to face. Um, and given that you are a replicant, I would probably give you advantage on the role if you wanted to do that. Okay. Why not? So make sure you click the advantage button at the top before you roll it. All right. Let me open my, let me open my sheet here. It would just be good to know if we're dealing with a replicant or a human, just just because. All right, I got the advantage button clicked to go down to observation. You have a success. So, yes, she is absolutely a Nexus 9 replicant. Um, and though this didn't probably require an observation role to tell, but um, so far the four security, who you assume to be security personnel, who all look alike, uh, at, at first twins and then triplets and then quadruplets are, are all replicants as well. Well, I assume that. You assume that. <laughs> yeah, that, I think everyone assumed that, but there's your confirmation. Okay. Um, so... Because you guys came all the way out to Sector 4, if your plan is to go to the Memory Lab next, yes. um, I'll let you do that during the same shift because it's in Sector 4. Um, it's not that far away. But um, I'll cut over to, before we do, okay. unless you have anything else to do to, at Wallace, I'm going to cut over to Olsen and Willem. Okay. All right. So 
Olsen, Bakker, and Willem. You guys are wanting to go to Bullet Bob's, is that correct? Good old Bob Gorski. Here we yeah, come. good old Bob Gorski, which uh, we, he, that's right, he's in Sector 5 in Hawker's Circle. Uh, so you're flying into Sector 5 as Fenna and Percival are flying out. Not that you'd necessarily see each other. I'm sure there's a fair amount of air traffic. Um, Bullet Bob's is easy, an easy place to find. It's well known. Um, and I think I've actually already shown you guys a picture of Bob Gorski. Yes, you did. By He's accident. Quite looker. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like him. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't at all look like a. Uh, Let's do the time warp again. <laughs> yeah. With a little <laughs> bit of a squarer jaw, perhaps, than. Um, God, what was that character's name? I hate to admit I don't remember. I don't um, remember either. Yeah. For some reason, I guess it's the long hair with the. Well, it, yeah, the, the long hair with the. Nice yeah. Um, so, Bullet Bob's is a. Uh, it, it's. Oh, cancel, cancel, cancel. I'm trying to find my handout. There we go. Why? Riff, riff Raff. Yeah, Riff Raff. That's it. You Googled that, didn't you? Had to. Had yeah. to know. <laughs> that's right, Riff Raff. Um, Bullet Bob's runner surplus is really one of the uh, one of the worst kept secrets in Hawker Circle. It is it is a large rectangular building with a uh, with a uh, uh, with a curved roof. It it almost screams uh, late twentieth century you know, military hangar type building. And uh, as you go into the, as you go through the, the front doors, which is, which are just a pair of old school double doors, um, you find yourself in a warehouse that's been converted into just rows and rows and rows of freestanding shelves. Everything from Vietnam War era, War era military boots to to ancient gas masks to all sorts of stuff is here. Uh, old out of service military uniforms, that type of thing. Um, and uh, you know, Willem probably takes the lead because he was the one who knew about this place, right? Yeah, he was the one who knew about Bob Gorski. So. He had connections that. That's right. That's right. So. Yeah. He, he probably takes the lead and, and says um, Gorski's usually towards the back. At least that's where the weapons are. And uh, and he uh, leads you through uh, the shelves. And you get to a, you get to a point where a wide counter uh, completely spans the width of the place. And behind that counter are all sorts of weapons. There's, there's antique firearms. There's... Uh, 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 there's antique firearms, there's knives, there's uh, even swords, there's, um, uh, and then there's more modern weaponry as, w uh, as well. And Gorski is there uh, uh, beyond the, uh, behind the counter. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any actual customers in the building. And as you guys are approaching, he, uh, he kind of sighs, he's writing in a old school paper ledger it looks like right on the counter and he kind of sighs and he throws his pen down and says great what does a couple of cops want from me don't tell me um, you're not cops you guys scream cops how, how are we doing this is Jim's character still um yeah I, I mean at this point I think you guys are probably approaching together once you've come out of the the maze of aisles towards the counter. All right. Well, I'll let you uh, handle most of the talking since you're here. <laughs> take out my badge, put it on the counter. Yes, Morning, Mr. Gorski. Yeah. Put it away. I know already. What do you need? We're investigating a homicide and looking for some information regarding a particular weapon. You might have some expertise. 
Huh. Okay. What kind of weapon are you talking about? PKD-5223. You ever sell those? Um, of course not. That's a Blade Runner grade <laughs> military weapon. I, why would I sell something like that? And as he says that, there's like an old AK-47 on the on the on the wall right behind him. <laughs> Hilarious. Well, let's say hypothetically, one of these was was sold recently. Would you hypothetically have a clue who might be the buyer? Um, hypothetically, I might have sold. Uh, a number of different types of weapons to different people. Um, a PKD blaster. Uh, I don't really remember selling one of those recently. Do we have a picture of um, Sandor from the morgue? You, Yeah, you would have a picture of Sandor from the morgue. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, let me see if this rings any bells. Jars your memory. I'll call up the picture on my... Uh, what is it called? Kia. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll put it on the table in front of him. Um, by the way, um, completely side note, it's, are you feeling better? You sound better. Uh, thanks for asking. I have long COVID uh, as per my doctor. So I don't have like the flu and cold type stuff anymore. Well, that's good. But the exhaustion is unbelievable. I'm just shocked at how weak and like frail I am all day long it's quite amazing i it feels exactly like pneumonia uh but i'm clear of it i went to the emergency room the other week the other day i think it was last week um and days get crossed anyway they did some because i was just couldn't catch my breath and uh i thought for sure i had pneumonia because i've had it before many times i'm like this has got to be pneumonia and it wasn't it's just the covid um so it's bizarre, you know, like I don't spend my days like hacking and, uh, you know, runny nose type stuff, but I walk 20 feet and I have to sit down. Mm. Or if I talk too, too long, I'll just run out of breath. Yeah, that's bizarre. Yeah. I have the little bit of the COVID like brain fog too, where, you know, I'll say to myself, oh, you know, I got to do something, whatever. Oh, a package arrived. I'll get up. I'll start walking towards the door. I get to the living room. I have no idea what I'm doing there. Mm. Like that fast, you know, like that old age. I mean, that shit happens all the time, but not, not usually quite so fast. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, I got over the physical effects of COVID pretty quickly, but I still occasionally struggle with the, I, I'll literally realize something that I need to do, realize that I have realized i needed to do this like four times in the last hour and then just as quickly it's gone um yeah it's it's yeah. pretty weird it's it's definitely a weird symptom it's it's bizarre so um okay sorry uh so you show him a picture of sandor off your kia um uh he kind of looks at it goes you know his brow kind of furrows eyebrows knit nah i don't recognize that guy oh that's a police officer shop i said weapon and uh, hypothetically speaking if it should turn out that you had anything to do with the sale transport or otherwise distribution of said firearm that would make you an accomplice if you were to be frank and upfront with us it would go a long way to helping you hypothetically huh <laughs> okay um make a manipulation roll Shoot. Did it work? It did work. Okay, yeah, I didn't hear a little. I yeah, guess you it, don't it hear rolled, And you have a success. Sweet. You have a you have a six on a D. Sweet, Bob Gorski, take that. Yeah. <laughs> Riffraff, uh, riff raff looking some bit. That's right. <laughs> he says, um, "Well, I don't know anything about this guy. Uh, I I've never seen him before, but um, I I did sell." I did sell a PKD five two two three a couple days ago to a woman. Um, I don't know. I don't remember her name. She paid. She paid cash, but she was uh, she was a cop. She looked like this, and I'll show him the uh, case picture handout of Leah. The, yeah. Yeah, he, he looks at her and goes, 
Yeah, that was her. You said she came in here a couple of days ago. When would that be exactly? Uh, it was. Uh, he goes. It was the day before yesterday. Um, she paid cash, no receipt, so I don't. I I didn't keep a record of the transaction, but she bought a she bought a, a PKD and uh, a case of uh, forty four caseless ammo to go with it. Jesus I didn't. Christ. She didn't say what she needed it for. I didn't ask. She was a cop. I sold her the gun. She, she showed you her badge and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't pay too close attention to it, but she flashed it at me. Hmm. And that's the only sale of this style of firearm that you've had in recent uh, recent months. Of a PK five two two three D blaster, yeah, that's it. I haven't sold anything like that for a while. All right, let's just have a little time out here. <laughs> <laughs> Get to think about this real quick. Um, I honestly did not expect that just now. Um, all right, I don't know if I have any other questions for this guy. Um, because that's pretty heavy indictment of Leah right there. And we picked up on the fact when we were discussing the case um, earlier before you got here, uh, Marty, we were discussing how it looked like in the photo, like she had like a package or some kind of satchel or I don't know what it was. In which photo is that? The uh, she's getting in the taxi cab close oh, the picture. Photo? Yeah, there's it. There's something. She's a little bulky, so it looks like there's some kind of a like she might have a yeah, like a satchel or like under her arm, a backpack or zoom in zero two two one four four pan left <laughs> pan left stop pull out. You see it now? Yeah, it's right. enhance. Oh. Enhance. Print that. Print that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I do see that actually. Yes. <laughs> Maybe that's what's in there. It's her stolen, uh, or not stolen, but her black market uh, PKD. I don't know. Um, I mean, that's a, that's a nuclear bomb as far as I'm concerned. Like, wow, she's in trouble. Um, you know, I I guess I'll ask him a few other questions. Um We've heard some rumors that the uh, replicant resistance might be buying some weapons or trafficking in weapons. Do you know anything about that? No, I don't get many replicants in here. I think it's. I, I think I'm referring to the movement against replicants. Oh, the. Uh, I got you. I'm sorry. I misunderstood your question. That's my fault. Um, well, you know those guys. Uh, those guys are, are freedom-loving Americans, and they have the right to own weapons, and they come in to buy a weapon, I'm going to sell them a gun. That's just, you know, I, I'm, I'm on the up and up. I, I check their backgrounds. If they're, if they're clean, they can buy a weapon. It's a free country. Yeah, there's nothing illegal with that. So you're saying they have been buying weapons? I'm sure I've had a handful in here. You know, you, you come to recognize them after a while. And then he kind of looks down at himself. He goes, "A lot of them dress like me." <laughs> he's wearing like he's wearing like old retired military fatigues and and uh, you know uh, combat boots that type of thing. He goes, "Now I'm not one of them." You understand? I some you know uh, uh, I I do some work with the LAPD, and you guys have a lot of replicants. I'm I'm not involved in all that. But I'm one. How does it work if a replicant wants to come in here and buy a handgun from you? Uh. I, uh, you know, it only the only replicants that are allowed to, to have uh, handguns that I'm aware of are, are LAPD employees or you know, the, along those types of things. If they're if they're security for a private company, they would be issued weapons by their company. Uh, so general laborers or pleasure models or what have you um, don't really come in here uh, to buy a weapon. Is it against the law? pause that is a really good question i got the impression 
than it is, but it didn't. That's good enough. Okay. Don't worry about it. We don't right. have to nail it down. That's fine. Just... I, I got the impression that it that it is, but um, I the 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 book's not extremely clear on that. That's so fine. we're going so to we'll say... with the belief that it is. Yeah, it kind of has logical sense, right? If you don't have a reason for it, what right. do you you know what do you need a weapon for? Um, so if there were, so some of these underground nexus groups, where do they get guns from? If not from you? Oh, well, I mean, there's, there's, surely there's, uh, there's a black market, uh, uh, of some sort. I'm sure there's various disreputable, uh, uh, individuals in the in the city that can get you anything you want i run a legitimate business so you run a nexus test on every customer wow no, a replicant I would, test I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that uh, that would be rather invasive of their uh, personal privacy wouldn't it well if i'm a replicant i want to buy a gun and i'm wearing sunglasses how do you know well, guess that's a valid question detective all right well, Mr. Gorski, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. You've been very helpful. I hope you have a good day. Always aim to please the boys in blue. Thank you. I'll hand him my card. I'll hand him my card. <laughs> it's really getting deep. <laughs> it sounds sarcastic, but he he actually has been quite helpful. <clears throat> If there's anything we can do for you, Mr. Gorski, let us know. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. He uh, he just kind of does a – and uh, goes back to his uh, his uh, inventory or bookkeeping or whatever it is he's doing. So what would – what does Bakker and uh, Novak think they want to do next? Yeah. Uh... You guys are in Hawker's Circle in Sector 5. Well, first things first, we get back to the car. I want to share this information with okay. the others. All right. Um, could we assume we're done from our relative tasks at around the same t time so we can discuss it? I would say so. Because most of these conversations haven't been that long. It's mo mostly travel time more than anything. Mm -hmm. Plus, anything you upload to your Kia, we would eventually see when they sync, right? Yeah. I'd say you guys, anything you upload, everyone else is going to get a, you know, it's going to get a text message, <laughs> a notification saying that you put something in. It's really looking, guys, like it's pointing towards a rogue, rogue replicant type of thing. Um, I mean, we know she's had issues with her memory, getting confused, thinking her daughter is real and all that stuff. Now she goes off and buys a... Uh, sidearm that makes it look like I mean why would she buy a sidearm that that points to a police officer doing this why not buy something that would throw suspicion off of her this particular choice in weapons seems like it just adds even more suspicion to her. I don't understand her choice but she definitely bought um, a weapon that matches the, the, you know, what we know of the uh, murder weapon. We don't know it was for sure 100%, but it's just way too, uh, way too circumstantial not to be like a, literally, you know, a smoking gun type of thing. Um, I mean, we, it's she's this, definitely the 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 leading suspect in this murder. Yeah, and we still have to find her. Yeah, so now we need some, we need to be investigating her specifically or uh, the leads about her memory that will give us some clues as to where she might have gone to. So I kind of feel like you guys have got the memory angle down, which I think is our best, our best lead to get some kind of background that would point to where she might be going or what she might be confused about. Um, that would cause her to do something like this. Maybe Jim's character and I should be trying to narrow down more other leads related to her background, like do like an actual uh, investigation of Leah specifically. Um, I, I guess, yeah, two thoughts from me. We 
haven't been to Leo's apartment yet and also the what do you call it Johnny cab and where they metro cab <laughs> yeah in, in my mind <laughs> <Johnny point>. cab. <laughs> it's, it's, get um, your ass to Mars <laughs> Exactly. Um, where did it drop her off? Okay. Yeah. I don't okay. Know those are both excellent leads. I think we should we should be investigating both of those. So how about okay? So if we're me and Jim are in sector five, you are. Um, her apartment is. Her apartment is in sector five, not far away because it's not far from the LAPD tower. All right, let, let's start with that then, since we might be able to get it done on the same shift. Okay. And then um, the Metro Cab uh, is also in Sector 5. So, But uh, if you want to go with the apartment first, we can do that. Um, let me, uh, I'll cut over to our replicants. And uh, I'll cut over to our replicants. Uh, it's okay if I get a heater on my uh, hot tea here? Yeah, go do what you need to do. All right, do everything. Uh, and you guys start heading south. Um, you guys start heading south uh, uh, following Highway 110 and uh, eventually turn off because uh, you've got, you know, you know where you're going. Uh, you've got the address. Um, Lilith Memory Lab is in a largely, it's a mostly abandoned industrial area. Uh, near the old uh, Tyrell Corporation buildings, it's um, a uh, when you come up on it, it is uh, when you come up on it, it is uh, it looks like a an office building or even a medical office building uh, in terms of just the general look and facade, though uh, in the background, or I, sh I shouldn't say in the background, but um, in the deeper part of the building, you can kind of see a dome. Uh, not sure if it's uh, something almost like an observatory dome, but much smaller. I don't know if it's something functional or just purely an aesthetic choice. Um, a pair of, uh, a pair of, um, uh, electric doors are uh, closed. Uh, there's a. It looks like there is a retina scanner next to the door, as well as an intercom. There is a um, and there is a camera that is um, panning back and forth over the entrance. Walk up to the camera and open my badge and just shove it under the camera's nose, so to speak. Um, a voice uh, comes over. It's, it's uh, a male voice. Uh, says, um, uh, Detective Fenna uh, with LAPD. This, uh, welcome to Lilith Memory Labs. Give me one moment. May I ask the purpose of your visit? We are here to speak with Lilith um, Tyrell in regards to a case we're investigating. Oh yes, my my apologies, please. Uh, uh, VP Quell from Wallace sent us a message that you would be coming. One moment, and the intercom goes quiet, and then the doors uh, doors uh, you hear a, a beeping. They and they open up. Um, Inside is a very plush, well-decorated reception area or waiting room. There's uh, there's several very comfortable chairs, uh, armchairs placed around, as well as a number of homey potted plants. Uh, there's a man behind the desk, and I'm going to show you what he looks like. Maybe? He looks like that. Okay. And uh, he looks up and he uh, he actually smiles uh, in a very friendly way and uh, says, uh, Detective Fenna, and you are Detective Percival, am I correct? Correct. Uh, perfect. Uh, Dr. Tyrell, uh, she is... 
Uh, she is finishing something up, but she asked me to lead you to her. Uh, so if you will just follow me, gentlemen. And he uh, he comes out from behind the counter and starts uh, starts walking down a hallway. The <clears throat> excuse me. He says, uh, "My name is Terry, uh, and I am always here." Should you need any assistance? Did somebody... Was there a chat message or something? Oh, it's back. Okay. My, 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 on, on the chat, my, my, it's not scrolling all the way down for some reason. It's kind of strange. Um, what do you mean? Like it's... Same problem. You can't see it's blocked or something? Yeah, like the very last line is partially Yeah, blocked. what I did was, um, I used my, uh, control back on my mouse wheel to uh, reduce the magnification of the web page and it looked like it oh yeah look at that. Worked. that worked perfectly thank you um, very good uh, as your uh, he like I said he takes you down um, down a hallway and there are several doors on either side of this hallway both have um, uh, both have a have a uh, have a light above them, um, uh, which they're all, uh, that, e that flashes either red or green and they're all actually red. Uh, but he takes you to one final location and this light is green and he looks at, uh, he looks at you and says, uh, uh, Dr. Tyrell is inside and he presses a button and the, the electronic doors open up. Um, the room inside is mostly, it's mostly shrouded in darkness. It's relatively hard to see, um, but with what little ambient light you can see that you're in the dome section of the, of the, uh, of the memory lab. And the first thing you notice is that there's actually two children, small, about the same age, maybe seven or eight. A boy and a girl. They're they're like sprawled out on the floor, um, drawing pictures on paper with uh, you know colored pencils and crayons, that type of thing. Look around for Leah or for um, Tyrell. Um, you uh, after a moment the. Uh, the, the the pictures or the the pictures excuse me after a moment the the forms of the two children themselves kind of start to flicker and then they disappear um, a woman appears she uh, comes from the far side of the room appearing out of the shadows and she uh, uh, she's got a strange electronic contraption on her head that she's removing and she <laughs> looks like this do, 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 do. where is she where is she there she is as she approaches she says uh, detectives I'm dr. Lilith Tyrell dr. Tyrell um, I'm Detective um, Finner, and this is a Detective Percival. Um, pleasure meeting you. Uh, you as well. How can I assist you, detectives? Um, I'd like to. Uh, well, at, as I speak to her, I'd like to uh, look carefully at her eyes to determine if she's human or a nexus. So, um, but what I'll say to her is, uh, well, we're doing an investigation. We have some questions uh, about uh, a Nexus 9 that uh, you all recalibrated for Wallace uh, uh, just over the last uh, couple weeks. And you, she re-entered service a couple days ago. She, uh, she nods and uh, slowly and says, uh, I am assuming you're speaking of uh, Leah. Correct. She's the only recalibration I've done within the last uh, 
last few weeks. So, um, can I can I tell if uh, make an Lilith... observation roll? Oh, didn't I thought you could tell if someone was a nexus or not? Well, okay. you can, but it requires either a physical oh examination. an examination, yeah, yeah. Okay. or or an observation roll if you uh, to know what you're looking if you know what you're looking for. Which you so do I get to do it with an advantage? Um, yeah, I'll give it to you. Okay. This is something you guys are pretty knowledgeable about. Oh, wow. Four successes? Holy crap on a cracker. Um, no, she is, um, she is definitely not a replicant. She is definitely human. Um, however, I will tell you that, um, you don't think that her eyes are original. She's definitely not a replicant, but um, you think her eyes are synthetic. Wow. She says, so detectives, what, what can I... Uh, how can I assist you in regards to uh, the Leah and the recalibration? Um, what exactly does a recalibration entail? Uh, we bring the uh, unit uh, back into the lab, uh, and of course we uh, deactivate her because we obviously can't have her uh, moving or acting in any way, shape, or form. Um, we need her inactive at the time. And we um, we reset everything to factory standards, back to the original production, uh, along with whatever additional uh, training, knowledge, information that's been inserted into the unit, including their baseline memory. So, um, generally, what causes uh, what causes uh, someone to fail their baseline, and how long does it take for a say a relatively new manufactured model? Um, you know, what is there? You know, what causes them to go off baseline, and how 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 long does that take? Can it happen in a month? Can it happen in a day? Does it take years? How does that work? Uh, Nexus nines are the most complex replicants ever created at this point. Uh, they they certainly uh, reach beyond uh, the even the Nexus 5s and 6s that my uncle's uh, company developed. And as a result, because of the complexities of these machines, uh, and especially not only, not only physically speaking, but the complexities of their minds, uh, the abilities to feel emotions, um, large amounts of stress can cause the failure of a baseline test. Now, that being said, uh, stress is also the controlling mechanism for many of the key memories. Uh, the the memory that we implant, the memories that we create and implant for each individual replicant is what helps generate that baseline test. And um, shall I say, uh, more stressful memories uh, help maintain proper control and baseline levels in that replicant. And so, uh, so it takes stress, um, but obviously uh, the Nexus is designed to handle a certain amount of stress without a problem, right? Oh, certainly. Absolutely, which is, uh, which is why I design the uh, the baseline memories that I do and the way I design them, because that stress is an important controlling factor as well. 
Uh, can you tell us a bit about Leah's baseline memories and why he, or how they looked and why those specific memories for her? I, I am uh, rather resistant to that. It is um, uh, obviously it's patented work and specific to that model. Currently she's missing and you do know that we have one dead replicant and if the newspapers would have to spin this as a replicant issue, you know where that would lead to. So we would have to insist on getting this information. You know it's for the greater good of the replicants, of course. Make a, uh, ma make a manipulation roll, if you would, please. Two successes. She, uh, she sighs and says, very well, detective, give me one moment. And she, uh, she, uh, moves over to a control panel and, and dims the lights a little bit. And she puts the, uh, the, the strange headset back on and it, uh, you notice how it projects light into the area in the middle, uh, and it, it, you know, a, a, a series of holograms uh, flicker back to life. And uh, suddenly you're in, a, you're in a spacious hall. Golden sunlight beams in through a huge picture window, revealing a red sandy vista outside. Someone moves past you, a, a small girl. Uh, Mummy, she says, you can't catch me. She runs off, giggling, disappearing into deep shadows. There's a moment of stillness, of total bliss, and then there's a sudden loud bang, like an explosion shaking the ground, followed by sharp rattling noises, gunfire, people screaming. The gunfire continues, and you run right towards the danger, towards the, the girl rushing through halls bathed in red light. Then you see the masked men clad in black, guns raised. You see her lying on the floor very still. Uh, and you hear screaming. And then just as quickly as all that happened, the scene vanishes and you're back in the memory lab and Lilith is taking the headset off. So what did we just see? <laughs> That was the memory that I designed for... What? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not even there, but what a psycho! <laughs> That's the memory you, you designed for Leah? Yes. Okay, so would it surprise Here's you... a picture of the little girl, by the way. Would it surprise you... Oh, I'm sorry. That's not the picture of the little girl. That's a picture of another little girl. I'll give you that in a minute. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> it's not a big deal. No, it's not. Um... Would it would it surprise you if uh, before her recalibration, Leah started to think that her daughter was alive, was real, was real and was alive? That is uh, highly unlikely. And that would surprise me uh, extensively. In fact, I, during the recalibration process, I of course saw all of her, I saw everything that was going on in there and she kind of taps the head and, uh, it, it is plainly obvious that she did not believe her daughter was real. Uh, but that the, those memories are designed to be strong on purpose. Um, you know, replicants are machines no different from, well, from the blasters you carry. Infinitely more advanced, of course, but they're machines nonetheless. The memories I design are meant to control these machines the most effective way possible by imprinting them with a deep trauma. The memory of this trauma is conditioned to be triggered at any time the replicant even considers the possibility of disobeying. This is 
a unique method of how I make Nexus 9 replicants fully obedient. It's simple, really. Morality has no role here. You wouldn't want the blaster in your holster to disobey you. Just as she uh, finishes saying that, um, the little girl whose picture I just showed you, because I showed you the wrong picture, um, actually comes running from a far side of the, uh, of the uh, memory lab. You didn't see her before. Um, and uh, she kind of stops for a moment when she sees the two of you, and she, uh, uh, she kind of uh, coyly hides behind, uh, behind uh, Lilith Tyrell's legs. She's got a she's got a piece of paper in her hand, and she she's she's kind of looking at you guys while saying, uh, "Look what I drew, mommy." And uh, Lilith looks down at it and says, "That's that's very beautiful, Sarah. Would you draw me another one, please?" And Sarah kind of looks at you too, and it's like, "Who are they?" Lilith says, "They're they're police officers. Just came to talk to me. They're good people." I'd bend down on my knee and look at the little girl and just, well, hello there. Uh, what's your name? She goes, um, uh, Sarah, are you a robot too? Just give her like this, uh, what? Look, but L L Lilith, Lilith kind of goes, honey, uh, the, the correct word is replicant. She goes, I mean, I mean, replicant. She kind of stumbles with the word a little bit. Yes, I'm, I'm a replicant as well. She says, "Mommy works on a lot of replicants. I'm not a replicant, but mommy works on a lot of them." I know. I hear your mommy is very good at her work. Um. I'm going to. Uh, lean in and say, it's very nice to meet you too, Sarah. And I'd like to do an observation to see if Sarah's a replicant. Okay, go ahead. Not that I'm sure what that information would give me, but. Come so, on. Out of character, quick question. Did Leah talk about her daughter as a daughter after the Recalibration or before the recalibration? Uh, that would be before. Yeah. And um, and uh, Leah, or I'm sorry, Sarah is most definitely not a replicant. She's human. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna. It's very nice to meet you, Sarah, and uh, I'm going to wait until Sarah leaves before we continue the discussion. I don't think, personally, I don't think this, an investigation is uh, a place for a kid. Yeah. Lilith, uh, she kind of, she kind of leans over and says, uh, says to Sarah, would you please go back to mommy's office and draw me another picture. I'll be there in a minute. And Sarah says, okay. And she, uh, she goes skipping off back across the, uh, across the, uh, memory lab dome area all right so i'll turn to lilith again and say i i just so you know i've had significant interactions with leah i don't know if you could see those interactions when you recalibrated and you saw those memories but um i've had i had had some significant interactions with leah prior to her recalibration she says very significant and it seemed that it was getting more and more, she was getting more and more, or was more and more believing the idea that her daughter was real. I know what you said, but um, I, uh, I just know her actions. Let me ask you a question. Um, let's just say for the sake of argument that she did begin to think her daughter was real. Now, the memory was that the memory you showed me appeared to show that her daughter had died, that that was the traumatic event. Is that correct? Correct. 
Um, so the question is, if she was believing her daughter was real, then her memory is that her daughter died. What if she became convinced by someone that her daughter was alive and someone was holding her daughter? Could that person coerce her into doing something that she wouldn't normally do or might be illegal or immoral? Well, that's a really fascinating hypothesis, detective. Um, however, a human could be right. A human if a human's, could be. if a human's child is being held by someone, being blackmailed for the safety of the child, that person would do almost anything to get the child back safe. But we're talking about a machine, a machine, admittedly, which does have its own emotional responses. But we're talking about a machine that that knows quite specifically that its memory did not actually happen. You yourself have your own memory that but, uh, the, I did not design, but that you know is not uh, did not actually happen. Is that correct? Correct. But if Leah went unstable again, and as was reported by multiple people that she did talk about her daughter as if real, then could it not be plausible that she thought otherwise? I suppose it could be plausible, but the recalibration, even even if that were even if that were the case, recalibrating her, uh, it, she was in service for months before uh, she failed a baseline test, and then uh, over another month before she failed another, and then we and then uh, LAPD chose to send her back to Wallace for recalibration. I only did that recalibration three days ago. Well, by and large. She is still missing, and we have evidence that she left the scene of her own accord and did not return to the police station. So she is, so to speak, going off expected behavior and baseline. So something is going on here. Well, that is, uh, that is certainly a concern, isn't it? You could say that again, yes. <laughs> Especially since you gave her a clean bill of health. She she was reset to original, uh, to original factory settings. So uh, everything was no different than if uh, than if she had just come off the assembly line. Could the reset not have taken, or how else would you explain her behavior, a recent behavior? I. Uh, I don't believe I have an explanation at the moment. And would the gunmen that killed her daughter, do they have a address or could she potentially be following up that lead? No, no. Uh, if, if, you, if you noted the red sands uh, through the window outside, this was a, this was a fictional off-world colony. And where would that colony be? Could you give us the details? I designed it after Mars. Interesting. But uh, again, of course, the the memory itself isn't real. It didn't happen. Of course, yes. Um, just two potentially not relevant questions, but. Um, the replicant resistance movement. Did you, do you have any interactions or any issues with them? She um, she uh, gets a little bit of a, a a distasteful look on her face for just a moment, and then she says, "I I don't care for them, obviously, but no, I don't have any trouble with them." And their opposition, I suppose the empathy movement against replicas do you receive any trouble with them or harassment no no i'm 
pretty much left to work. Lucky. Uh, I would want to double check whether she's lying or trying to hide anything. Make an insight the... roll. What kind of roll is this? It is the uh, it is the old school bullshit tech a check. It's called an insight roll okay. when you determine if you want to determine if someone's lying. So you have a success. She's not lying, but she's not being completely forthcoming on this note. Uh, can I distinguish which one she's not forthcoming? Mm -hmm. um, it, it it definitely has um, it definitely has something to do with um, uh, trouble with replicants. And is there anything or any trouble you've recently had with any of the replicants or replicant factions or interested interesting parties? It is any information could help us with this, and if we can keep replicants out of the media, the sooner we wrap up this case, the better. She says, uh, "No, nothing recent." How many? Uh, how many Nexus Nines have you had to um, uh, recalibrate? Oh, just uh, just two. Uh, just too recently or in the last year or the uh, last just since they've gone back into acceptance and production just to uh, Leah and then a uh, um, and then a labor model um, uh, that worked in a factory out somewhere in sector two uh, I can I can look up the uh, I can look up the data if you need to but it was it was uh, it was several months ago, right after he went into, went into, um, uh, shoot, I'm sorry. As soon as he went into, um, as soon as he was activated, it was a completely unrelated issue. It was a, uh, it was, there was actually a factory accident, uh, that caused us to do some rebuilding, but it, it was, it was nothing in regards to a failure of a baseline test. It would still be good to have that information, so we can make sure that we're thorough, uh, especially with the uh, politics and the media all over the show. She says, "I'll uh, I'll have Terry pull it up for you up front." Thank you, detectives. Is there anything else before I get back to work? Um. I just want to be clear about one thing. So when you recalibrate, you basically reinforce or re-implant the original traumatic memory. Is that correct? Correct. And we also erase all, we also erase uh, uh, everything after the, uh, we erase everything after, um, after they were put into service. All, all memory uh, after activation is removed. Like I said, reset oh. the factory standards. But you, but you saw those memories before you recalibrated. Yes. Correct. You didn't happen to record any of that information, did you? No, I can't say I did. I, in hindsight, I could see how this could be useful for future information, especially if there were further failures of baseline tests. Didn't even dawn on me. That's something I'll have to do moving forward. I give her a description of Styler and ask her if she remembers that person from Leah's memory at all. Oh, um, okay, yeah, Yella Skyler, the the head of um, of uh, Kill Magazine. Um, she uh, she looks at it and she says, "No, I don't remember seeing that face." Um. And styles, I give a, a description of styles. Um, and I also want to see how she reacts to styles' as a description. Okay. She, uh, she says, um, now, that individual I do remember popping up several times. The albino, you'd remember. Yeah. Um, I, 
I again, I didn't pay a lot of attention to these memories. I I just I I scanned through them and deleted them. Um, but it it seemed that um, she met with him several times. Um, uh, someplace public. Maybe a uh, maybe a marketplace or a bazaar, or and then she kind of snaps her fingers. No, uh, she met him several times on Animoid Row. Uh, once with an older gentleman. Beyond that, I can't say. I I uh, I can say, but. Well, thank you for that. You've been most helpful. Um, First of all, any other questions? Right, I'm writing. Hold on a second. And you've never seen that older gentleman before. Do you just know it's just... I'm assuming gray hair. That's how you could tell. Wrinkles. Yes. You he, older uh, about, do you think? He was, um, uh, he, he had, uh, he was bald. Uh, and, um, uh, definitely, uh, definitely an older gentleman. My guess would be maybe in his seventies. Um, and I seem to think, I seem to remember there was something about his eyes. But that's, <laughs> that's all I could remember. Um, wearing a suit, maybe. Of course, I don't know if that information would help you much, but... Anything would um, potentially help. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, she uh, she uh, reaches into a pocket and pulls out a card and says... Uh, Hey, if you need anything, don't hesitate to call. Uh, Terry uh, is always here, of course. I give her a thankful smile. Thank you very much. All right. Very good. So let me cut over to Olson Bacher and Willem Novak. You guys are going to the apartment. Yep. Very good, very good, very good. Um, so, Leah's apartment building is not um, is not uh, um, far from the LAPD building. Uh, most 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 detectives uh, have apartments relatively nearby because this you know this area is part of the old city. And there's 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 huge skyscrapers and apartment buildings everywhere, most of which are abandoned and run down, but many of which have been renovated um, to the uh, so that they can be uh, usable. And of course, the LAPD, uh, you know, if you're a detective, you basically get them for free. So the um, we are in just checking my because we're in shift two. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. All right. Yes. Very good. Just all I needed to be sure of. Um, all right. The um, the apartment building it's 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 a it's an old gray building like many others, and of course you've got the address. Uh, you you come down into the lobby, uh, and uh, it's there's there's the floor is made of old broken tile that's probably over a hundred years old. Water's dripping somewhere. Uh, there is a, uh, there are several elevators which are all marked out of order. Um, uh, and then, of course, uh, doors that go to the stairwell. Willem kind of looks at you and shrugs and pushes one of these open. Olsen and uh, starts climbing steps. Uh, 11 flights up. You guys finally uh, come out on the, excuse me, 13 flights up on floor 13. You're, uh, 
you come up and you're you're circling through the hallways to find her apartment number and as you're so doing you find it and it's a it's a it's a conventional door with an electronic lock and it says across it um someone has scrawled in red paint across it the word skin job and while you're looking at that a rather burly guy down the hall kind of snaps his attention on you guys and uh he starts striding purposefully your way he shouts hey and he's he's coming up on you guys he Let's says what? yeah he's he uh he comes up and he goes what do you guys want you friends of this skin job here maybe you should mind your own business and i'll show him my badge he goes, oh, okay, so you are, huh? Probably part of that uh, replicant detect unit they've got. That the, the replicant detect unit that employs skin jobs. Guy smells like whiskey. He's kind of slurring his words a little bit. What are you doing here? He goes, I live here. It's important. Just got to make sure people aren't, uh, you know, here doing things they're not supposed to be doing. You live in the hallway? My apartment's up the way, man. Oh, why don't you go there? <laughs> All right. Um, make a manipulation roll. <laughs> Do you want to push the roll? No, I'll happily arrest this vagrant. Okay. He needs that. He, uh, if he needs me to. <laughs> he kind of goes, why don't you go there? Why don't you just go back to your tower where it's all dry and clean? You can tell he's uh, his brain's a little addled. He's uh, struggling to find what might be a reasonable insult. <laughs> all right, good talk, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd say Willem probably goes. Uh, he, he just kind of puts a hand on the guy's shoulder and says. We're an official police business. Just get the hell out of here. Get out of our way. Let us do our jobs. And I'll let uh, I'll let I'll let Novak make a manipulation roll. <laughs> I see that Leah was popular with the neighbors. Well, <laughs> he didn't. This guy's too that. drunk to be manipulated. That's right. He really is. <laughs> he misses <laughs> every other word. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah, here. Skin job. That's funny. He uh, he kind of looks at the hand. He goes, "Get your hand off me! Get your stinking hand off me! You damn dirty human!" No, um, sorry. Uh, and uh, I think Novak kind of pushes his jacket back, and you can see his blaster stuck in his holster at his. Uh, at damn, his, uh, Novak! And it's getting he, heavy. He, <laughs> He says, uh, "He says, look, we're here. We're here doing a job. Get the hell away from us. We're cops and we're not replicants. So go on." Guy kind of is like, "Well, you're probably not worth it anyway." He turns around, starts going back up the hall. I want to make sure he like goes into his apartment. I don't like the. Yeah, he, he goes about 30 feet up and uh, stops at a door, that an apartment door that was left open, kind of shoots a look back at you guys, walks inside, the door slams behind him. All right, cool. So, you guys want to go into the apartment? Yes, I will uh, draw my service pistol. All right. The... Uh, the door is locked remind me whose apartment is this leah's leah's so the door is locked do we have lock picks um so there's there's kind of two ways to go about this uh number one it's an electronic lock so uh you can try to do an electronic bypass which would be a tech roll or you can use something called force, 
which is a, a strength based skill and that's exactly what it sounds like you know you're giving the door a, a strong kick to, to just break it open Olson votes for force yeah I think um, I think Novak is right there with you because his tech roll would be a C and a D um, what's your uh, what's your force Olson So my strength is A, but my force is C. Okay, so your roll would be better than his. Um, so if you want to, uh, if you want to make the roll, you are welcome okay. to. I'm trying to. Kick Boo, you yeah. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Take that Two door. Successes. So. Uh, Have my way with you. What does that look like? That looks like a stiff kick to the lock. Yeah. Yeah. TJ yeah. Hooker style. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right wonderful reference the 80s were such a great time um the uh you know the the lock itself is a is a new sturdy electronic lock but maybe the framing around the door less so and there's a there's a splitting of wood as the uh as the internal part of the door jam breaks off and the door swings open and i'm going to uh actually have a map for this look at that a map. You Holy guys cow. see Hanved Building Apartment 52? Negative. I just see black screen. <clears throat> oh, that's interesting. Why is there only black screen? Does it have dynamic lighting on? It has dynamic lighting on. How about now? Yes, but uh, it's showing me the whole thing now. So if you want it hidden, I'm nah, looking I'm, I'm looking away. It. It's all good. So okay. uh, the door is here. And it opens into um, it opens into a hallway, which is helpfully labeled hallway. Um, there's an open doorway to your right that goes into um, that goes into a bathroom, and then the other end of the hallway seems to open into a living area. Yeah, Novak's got his gun out and. Okay, I'll uh, motion to uh, Novak to wait here, and I'll check the bathroom real quick. All right. So um, the bathroom is as you as you enter the bathroom, the lights come on automatically. It's uh, it's very clean, very simple. Um, there's not much in the way of personal effects here uh, of any kind. There's I mean there's there's literally like a hairbrush. And there's some soap next to the sink, and that's about it. There's almost nothing here. It doesn't even look like it's been used in a while. Um, there right, is come. another doorway that opens up into a kitchen area. Okay, um, I'll get to that door and uh, make like I'm going to open it so Novak sees me, and then I'll nod to him to go up the hallway, and I'll go into the kitchen at the same time. Okay, and it's not even a door. It's just a, just a doorway. Okay. Um, it, uh, it, it's, everything is like open for a floor plan. The kitchen, as you move through it, there's a couple uh, dirty dishes in the sink and that type of thing. Um, but again, uh, they, you know, based on, based on, uh, just the way things look, it, it, it doesn't look like there's been anybody here for a little while. Novak, as you come out the other side, I'm going to show you a picture. Aren't you excited? Yay. Um, let me make sure I've got the right one. That's it. I'm just going to, I know, uh, you two aren't there, but I'm just going to show it to everybody because that's where the fun is. Ooh, nice. That's exactly how I pictured it. So where the kitchen and the bathroom, I mean, the bathroom was very clean, not much out of, it didn't look like anything out of place, that type of thing. The, um, and the kitchen had a couple dirty dishes, but it was overall very clean. The living room is a little different. It's, it's messier. Um, the, you know, the bed has, is, uh, is, uh, in disarray. There's, um, uh, some books laying out. There's some plates and a bowl that are, that are out. Um, it's, uh, you know, it looks a lot more lived in is the best way to put it. Where do you want to start? 
I hate it when I'm talking and I forgot that I'm <laughs> muted. <laughs> I always feel so stupid. Um, so there's no other, there's not like a balcony. She can't. No, no, like no, no external there. windows. All right. So let's, let's toss the place. All right. Um, Novak, uh, checks out the, um, the table that's got the, uh, the, uh, plate in the bowl. Um, he, uh, he uh the bowl's got noodles in it and he kind of he kind of feels that in there uh, and there's also a thermos right there that has some uh some some old coffee in it he looks up and he says the the food is cold and congealed the coffee is is room temperature it's got a film on top of it he's looking down in the thermos it's got film on top of it doesn't look like any of this has been touched for a few days the uh, nightstand has a picture. I presume that's her daughter. Uh, the nightstand does have a picture, and it is it is in a synthetic frame. And I'm going to show you. Um, oh, they didn't do that right. Um, but yeah, there's a there's a picture of a uh, of a long haired brown girl, uh, <laughs> a long brown haired girl probably 10 years old give or take maybe 11 somewhere in that ballpark we're gonna assume that's her daughter i didn't see the memory so i don't have a way of knowing but that's uh, a true statement yeah. where do they get these like props do they give them to the replicants when they come out of the wrapper um not that you're aware of no this is kind of strange all right i'll take the picture out of the frame Now, that's really interesting. Um, so you see the picture? Yeah, I do. Okay, and then I'm going to just tell you this, even though it's not in the spirit of the way it's supposed to work, but because it, it, it's really hard to see. It's easier to see on the physical handout. Um, down in the very, on the back of the picture, in the very bottom right-hand corner... There's a block printing of Doc Badger. Yeah, I see that now. It's like a watermark or some kind of stamp or something. Yeah, it's a lot easier to see on the physical handout than it is on, on this. So that's why I made sure you saw it. Okay. So we'll be taking that. All right. Uh, is there anything else in the nightstand? There's, it looks like there might be a drawer. Um, there is a drawer. Uh, opening it up, there's not much in there. There's um, there's a box of tissues as well as a number of discarded, crumpled tissues. Um, uh, I, a pen, some change. All right, so Novak will check out the open book on the table, the book in the thermos and the little alcove, and then the open journals and whatever else that is on the coffee table. While I check out the bed, looks like there might be some side drawers. I'll look underneath it, and then I'll look in the uh, little fold-away alcove there. Yep. Um, so looks the, like there might be, a, is that a crack in the wall? There's something discolored in the middle there. I don't know. I'll just check it. I mean, it could be my imagination. Uh, um, the, uh, so the, the, the drawers contain clothes, um, nothing, nothing abnormal, just pretty, pretty standard, uh, 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 shall we say, uh, female cop fashion of the day. Um, and of course the bed folds up into the, into the wall. It's, uh, you know, like an old Murphy bed. Um, the books are all, uh, Can I interrupt you yeah, real quick? Uh, please. Sorry. Is there a chance that I could still raise the other team members while they're <coughs> while they're at the uh, memory, ladies? Um, I don't see why not. Um, I'll raise them on the radio if possible. Okay. Um, find out if they can uh, ask them if they can find out if they give replicants uh, mementos, pictures things like that from their uh from their implanted memories 
Oh, I would say your your replicant uh, uh, squad mates could certainly answer that. Um, uh, from their own experience, the answer would be no. Okay. So that's very interesting. Maybe somebody's screwing with her on purpose. <clears throat> but where would somebody get a picture of her implanted memory? Oh. Um, Maybe she went to whoever the label is at the back and got a memory print done. There's a there's a body a in your um, head. Who wants to make a tech roll? Nope. I have a very very bad tech. I have C intelligence D tech. Hmm. That's pretty low. I've, I've got a B and D. What's Percival? Hold on, I'm looking. Um, I, I didn't have my character sheet open. Tech, 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 tech. Where am yep. I finding? It's under it, yeah. There it is. I have an A, alpha. So I am I guess I have the best. You're the guy. Do you want me to roll? Absolutely. Uh, advantage or normal? Normal. Normal. Oh, yeah. See? See? So, <laughs> so Percival, um, you are aware that uh, there there is a technology called a uh, Stellene scan uh, that can be done on replicants, which will can isolate any given image in a memory uh, and can even be hard printed. That's good to know. Well, here's, I'm going to send them a copy of the picture as well as a copy of the name Doc Badger that's on the back. Okay. Um, so you upload, the, basically you upload the picture to the Kia so they all have it. Um, yeah. You guys would recognize the little girl in the picture um, as the little girl from Leah's memory. Okay, so we're all on the same page with all that. Yeah, and then um, I maybe I ask Tyrell if uh, if they know who this Doc Badger person is. Well, Novak is your connections guy, I think, right? He's an A connections. That's right. Okay, so I'll I'm gonna let him roll. Okay. <laughs> oh God, zero. We'll let him push. Push it. There we go. Um, Novak. Uh, says uh yeah i know who doc badger is he's um he's got a uh he's got a pawn shop um down in uh he's got a pawn shop near here in sector five all right so we're gonna have to check that out but let's keep looking we might have some of the stuff so you asked about the book um the various books um most of them are just, um, most of them are like fiction classics, you know, Treasure Island and stuff like that. Um, however, one of them is a book of poetry, and the reason why this seems interesting is that it, well, I mean, it's, it's one of the two books that are left open, but this one actually has a page torn out of it. Um, that's the page that it's left open to. Is this Rudyard Kipling? Who's this? Uh, William Blake. William Blake. Okay. Yeah. The Tiger. Mm. I know this poem. But there is a page that's been torn out of it. So what what is this 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 page is not obviously the missing page. What? No, this is this just is the page it was left open to. Across from this. Right. It was the it was the next page that was torn out. The following page. Correct. So I'll look up the Tiger by William Blake online and see if there's like more to it. All right. All right. Um. Make a uh, make a tech roll. Boo. <laughs> All right, hold on a minute. Why can't I close this poem? There we go. 
attack roll. Oh, uh, yeah. So you can push it if you want, but you can only push the one die. Since you rolled a one on one of them. Uh, you can just leave it for later, I guess. Uh, Novak, look out the tiger on Google, will you? <laughs> <laughs> but William Blake. I think Percival's your guy, really. <laughs> he's your, hey, he's your research guy. Get on the radio. Hey, Percival, can you research a poem by William Blake called The Tiger? Just a famous poem. I, re I recognize this line. Let me see it. I'm looking at it. Where? Hold it. Where did you find this poem? It's in Leah's apartment. No, I know that. Is it? This is the page. Is this? Is this? This is the book. But you said there's a page torn out. Was right. this the page? No, or the no? next page is torn. The next page is torn out. Hmm. All right. I let him know specifically page sixty four from the complete works of William Blake. What edition is it? The the Penguin Classics edition. <laughs> Whatever it is, uh, there's a page missing. I'm sure ISBNs are still a thing in 2037. ISBN blah 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 blah. International Standard Book Number for those of you who don't know. Every yeah, book has one. We need to find page sixty four. So this is the uh, this is the twenty twenty two edition. So if I'm going to look for this on my Kia, do I need a tech roll? I need a tech roll. All right. That's why I'm calling you, Percival. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> What's your tech? Like a Delta D, or a Charlie? D yeah, is a dummy. Can't do it. Just can't do it. Oh wow. Would you like to push the roll, Percival? Come on, Percy, do better. Well, I tried to, but it said type error cannot read properties of the defined reading substring. Well, that's See, weird. it's not his fault. He needs to do it again. He gets a freebie. Yeah. I don't understand. Um, yeah, it, it's got to be an error with um, with uh, it's roll twenty. Be an error with roll twenty. Uh, let me look. There's got sounds be like somebody needs a baseline recalibration there. <laughs> 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 Uh, come on, roll twenty. Are you a replicant? All right. Um, D twelve. Yeah, there might be a setting somewhere that's screwed up. All right. Well, just I'm rolling two D twelve, so I'll go. I'll just do it. There All right. Go. So D twelve. Roll two. Oops, not eleven. How'd that do that? Two. Roll. One success. All right. All right. Because you have four and a seven, so the seven's a success. Um, I'm just going to show you the. Uh, I'm going to show you the 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 handout's going to be the actual torn out page, but the point is to to get you. Appreciate it. You guys should see that it's called handout P. Huh. That's all I can say is, huh. 
Anything else to look at in the apartment? Yes, there's many things. Um, where'd my picture go? All right, so there's still some other books there. Yeah, um, I, I, they're they're all fiction. They're all classical fiction. Okay. Um, and is that a box? What's that a box of with the sticks coming out of it? Is that food? Uh, it's an old box of uh, of noodles with uh, chopsticks. It's been. And is that like? Is that a keyboard? It's hard to tell. I'm not sure what it is. So we're going to go with it's not important. Okay, cool. <laughs> what about the uh, butterfly jar? Something. Yeah, there's a um, over on a table by itself under a light is a large glass jar, and it it has inside of it um, a couple of uh, a couple of twigs uh, and three or four butterflies of just. One of them looks like something uh, you remember hearing about as a kid, something called a, a monarch butterfly, which, of course, is now extinct. Um, but there are several others that, uh, that glow luminescently, you know, or uh, of, um, uh, you know, of just very wide, a very wide variety of uh, brightly colored butterflies. And they just kind of flutter around in the jar occasionally lighting on the twig but in general um in general uh uh just fluttering around inside this jar okay uh novak will check the kitchen while i check the uh, big bookcase with the drawers um the big bookcase is is covered with tomes from um uh, you know from a variety of of years and they all seem to uh they all seem to be related mostly to 17th through 19th century english fiction um uh the drawers themselves are empty okay uh nothing in the kitchen i presume no the kitchen's got a couple old plates and bowls in it but nothing that's seems to be of much interest all right we'll check under the couch look for loose tiles like secret hiding holes type things um no, I don't find anything. Okay. So we've got a William Blake poem that's been ripped out. And we've got a picture of her daughter memory, presumably printed by Doc Blake. Doc Badger. Doc Badger, my bad. William Blake. No, not Doc Blake. <laughs> uh, so... I can't think of anything else to do here. By the way, did you guys ever have to read William Blake in school? I don't think so. He's sometimes a tough read. But I'm not going to discuss this this poem because that would be out of character. <laughs> um, 17th century or 18th century? I read some of it. My junior. 1894. Yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. What? I, I asked 17th or 18th century. I couldn't remember because I, I read some of him in my junior year. My, my junior year of high school was all British literature, and it was brutal. English literature, I mean, American literature is worse. Yes, it is, because I did that my sophomore year. Oh, God, that's horrible. Yeah, nothing but... Hawthorne well, and Hawthorne and Hawthorne. Oh, yeah, God, but before me. that, you start off with sermons. Yeah. <laughs> All the early literature was sermons. It was just brutal. Yeah. That sounds right. terrible. <laughs> and then you have to read the Scarlet Letter, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I read that, too. And, uh, All right. Yeah, we read a lot of Hawthorne. It was, it, was, it was rough. We read Beowulf in the Old English. That was... Still don't quite understand why we had to do it in Old English, but... <laughs> okay. Well, you've never read Shakespeare until you've read him in the original Klingon. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Jim Bob. That's right. <laughs> All right. Um, I I think that wraps up shift two. I 
think that Howard wraps Sitter. up that. So that's the that's the afternoon shift of uh, of day one. So we are on to the evening shift. So it's a question of what our intrepid guys plan to do. That's a really really good question. Well, we we have two leads that. Uh, Novak and Olsen are on, but they don't have to necessarily be the ones to investigate them in the uh, evening shift. One is the Metro Cab, and the other is Doc Badger. What do you guys got? <sighs> yeah. Well, I'm not sure what we've got because... We've got a memory of a older gentleman, so we could double back to Skyler for that one. Um, I'm not a. Sp I'm. I'm to be honest, I don't think we got much of anything out of Quell or Lilith other than a veiled threat by Quell. Quick question. Did Styles say that he knew um, Leah when he spoke to the human detectives? Or um, did he say he met her the first time in the bar? No, he saw her at the snake pit, saw her at the bar and in the crowd. But he didn't. He didn't say he had, he knew her, or had seen her before. Right. And have our request for the AL, LAX um, spaceport been bounced yet, or not yet? Yeah, uh, been denied. Uh, Holden <laughs> thinks that your. Um, your evidence to the idea that she's trying to get off world at this point is little more than a guess, uh, and that uh, they don't have the resources to do that at this time. Um, oh, we before we end the shift, um, what's his name? What's his name? Lilith's uh, assistant or, or whatever, he owed us some information on that other ma model they recalibrated oh he did he did Absolutely. and so he owes us that before we leave um yep yeah, not a problem um the uh the uh name the sorry the serial number was one seven point six two three. Name one, Daniel. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Once I got to write this down. One seven point. Yep. One seven point six two three. Yep. Name was Daniel. Daniel. Okay. Well, I guess we'll do some research on that when we get back. Um. That gives us something to look into. Um, I didn't write it down. What when you guys, Bacher, when you guys looked at that card, what was the name on the back? It was the name of the company that made it. What was it called? Doc Badger. Yeah, Doc Badger. Company Doc or person. We don't know which. Um, yeah, Novak, Novak knows that Doc Badger runs a pawn shop in second. That's place. right, that's right. You confirmed oh, it. In fact, in Hawker's Row, where, where you guys just were. Doc, Bad, Doc Badger runs a pawn shop. Yeah. But that was on the back of the picture? No, the book. It was on the back uh, of the picture. Back of the picture. Okay.
Well, guys, I don't know. What's next then? Um, it looks like... Well, I'm not sure if the pawn shop would be open, but personally, I'd like to go past the spaceport and just flash her image of Leah and Styles, and maybe just ask the you know, security guards there if they can give us a call if they see Leah. Uh, whilst we might not have official, you know, monitoring at the spaceport, we could at least ask them unofficially or on the case to keep a lookout. Um, I think that's okay. I think I would like to do some research on this this uh, Nexus labor model, Daniel, that they had to recalibrate. And I assume the metro cabs will still be open if uh, somebody wants to have a look or ask them about the cab and where they got dropped off. Oh, that's right. We can't forget we have the... We have to talk to somebody about that. Yeah. And you all have access to your own you know, to your own spinners, so you can split up into further ways than pairs if you need to. Um, I'm just quickly going to pop off, be right back in two minutes, okay. and I guess Leo will be on her way to LAX spaceport. Okay. Uh, I mean, you know, yeah. Yeah, so you can go ahead and um, put that into your uh, into your shift, uh, your after your evening shift, your shift three. Um, who's going to go to the, um, who's going to go to the taxi place? Uh, well, I think that's too right. Cause it's six or five. Sorry. No, <laughs> uh, yes. The Metro let, cab place is in sector five. Let me, let me say it a different way. We should be able to call Metro cab give the cab number and they should be able to give us the name and information of the driver. And then we'll find out, is he there? Is he out in his cab or is he not at work? Which means he's likely home and we can get his home address. Right. We don't want to necessarily travel to the cab place and then have to travel somewhere else. If we can make a phone call and pinpoint him first. But who's going to do that? Who's going to who's going to investigate the cab? I mean, we can do it. We're right here, right okay. in the same sector, so we can go there, look up their records, look up where they delivered the passenger. All right. So what? And maybe talk to the cabbie. Yeah, you'll you'll need to talk to him for sure because uh, he had the eyes on her. Um. All right. So if you guys do that, I'm going to search digital records for this other replicant that they recalibrated. Can I do that from my Kia or do I, should I go, do I have to go back to Esper? Um, I, you would, uh, you would definitely, well, you can do it from your Kia. Um, I, it would, um, it'd probably be more advantageous to do it from the mainframe. That's what I thought, because I get an advantage of plus two or something. Yeah, you get it. You get, get advantage, advantage on the roll. Yep. All right. So that's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to I'm going to uh, rather than go to the spaceport, I'll let Fenna go to the spaceport. Yeah. I will go. She can to, drop you off on the way there. On right. The way by. Yeah. So I'll go back to headquarters and uh, interface with Esper. So I'm going to put that in my shift three. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, so we'll uh, we'll definitely start with we'll start with Percival. We'll just go left to right. So uh, Fena drops you off at the LAPD tower, and you make your way down to the mainframe. Um, so you want to you want to look up information on Daniel? Uh, yeah. All right. Um, go ahead and um, go ahead and make your roll, your tech roll. Make sure you have advantage clicked. Yeah, I gotta pull up my sheet. 
Yeah, when you're working from a laptop with only one screen, you can't keep stuff open all over the place. So I'm constantly closing stuff and reopening. I'm a big fan of my 36-inch screen with my 30-inch uh, with my 30 uh, inch to the left. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. I like lots of screen space. Um. All right. Come Especially on. when I'm writing, you have no idea how many, how many uh, Google Windows I have open and. Oh yeah, <laughs> researching stuff. That and always have th thesaurus.com open and. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, there we go. Okay, two successes two successes so perfect um yeah uh he was he was put into service uh in november of last year basic labor model uh sold to a uh factory out in the um industrial uh sectors and and one of the industrial uh, uh to a company in one of the industrial areas in sector two um he was recalibrated uh a couple months ago due to a uh, factory accident uh, which caused substantial damage to his um, uh, to his uh, uh, to his to his brain and they basically had to rebuild and recalibrate uh, part of him um, it's all pretty it's all pretty straightforward instant report uh, everything's filed officially everything's on the up and up um, he is actually listed as being retired out of service. Uh, it looks to be that about a month ago, a ton of bricks fell on him. Literally. Literally. They said Acme on the side. <laughs> so he was, he was killed instantly, and the company uh, chose to replace him. How convenient. <laughs> well, you're at the mainframe. What else would you like to look up since you're here? I'm thinking. Um, All right. Um, well, since Percival's a replicant who may or may not, since I may or may not have um, any basic information on William Blake, I'm going to I'm going to research William Blake. Um, now, if you have information as the game master, um, you can provide it. What I personally know is that the tiger was basically a poem that um, the tiger was really a symbol of a question that was, why does God allow evil to exist? Really, um, you know how how can how can a benevolent God create something um, you know vulnerable and or and also wonderful and also create something so. Um, scary and ferocious as a tiger. Um, of course, there's also a fair number of lines in there that are just marveling uh, at what the tiger can, you know, how beautiful and ferocious a tiger can be. That's all I remember from the poem, um, from analyzing the poem. Well, it 
may not be the one we need to focus on. I, it's probably the letter, the the other one that we need to focus on, because that's the one she tore off and took with her. Hold it. The second page. Right. But the it's not it's not the second page to that poem. No, it's not. It's to a different poem. Which, it's a different entire poem. Which I... Well, that was the other thing is... Um, That was handout P, and we don't have the page number. We we went ahead and got the next page, right? But but I'm confused. Yeah, um, that. Uh... That uh, particular, um, that particular poem is, uh, give me one moment, I'm trying to find you the title, that particular poem. Uh, but that particular poem is, uh, is, uh, is actually, why can't I find the name of this? It's driving me bonkers. Um. That particular pay, that particular poem was written actually uh, as a letter to his wife, uh, and it has a number of biblical references in it as well. Um, but I can't seem to find the name of the poem, and I apologize for that. It is. You're talking about the second one. Yeah. It is from a collection of letters to Thomas Butts. It's called With Happiness Stretched Across the Hills. Ah, there it is. Otherwise known as the Feltham Letter. <clears throat> and it references much of William Blake's own uh, mythology that he created. But that is not present in the... Uh, we have... In what you but, have. Yeah, it's really... It's a it's like a, a small portion of a multi-paragraph multi letter. We have a small outtake from it. <clears throat> Um, hmm. All this computing power and nothing to Google. Yeah, what would you Google? Well, if you want to noodle on that for a moment, I can yeah, come back. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, it's no big deal. Um... So we'll go to Bakker and Novak. You guys are heading over to Metro Cab? Metro Cab headquarters, which is... Yeah, whatever is closer. I mean, they both seem like they're pretty close. They're both pretty close. So you tell me where you want to start. Metro Cab or you want to head well, to Doc Badger's pawn shop? Let's... Uh, I suppose we'll go to Metro Cab real quick. And on the way, I will call them and let them know we're coming. And uh, we, you know, give them the particulars and that we need to speak to the driver of that cab. Okay. So, um, um, very good. The directions from that cab on such and such a date when we get there. So, yeah. Give me one second. I'm going to do this. Let's see what happens. Perfect. Um, Novak actually, um, Novak actually knows uh who you're going to talk to when you get there um damn novak he knows the city pretty well uh as you guys pull into to metro cab it's a it's it's an old dingy building with a big neon sign that over top of it that says metro cab is there a little cage off to the side with Danny DeVito in it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Come on, you love these references. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, he says, uh, he says there's a, um, there's an, there's a woman made of pure iron that, that runs the, uh, runs the, uh, desk. Her name is Helga Ermgard. Um, so that's who we're going to be talking to. Uh, as you guys step in, um, they're true to his word. There is a, 
there's a woman uh, sitting at a sitting behind the desk and behind a computer terminal. She is dressed truly severely uh, with a with a blouse that is buttoned up all the way to her neck. She's probably in her late fifties and has enough makeup on that it's probably applied with a putty knife and just iron gray hair. Um, she, uh, as you step in, as you come in, she, uh, looks at both of you and her eyes land on Novak for a moment. And, uh, she, uh, she suddenly gets, uh, she gets a, a big smile and seems to make a show of straightening her blouse for just a moment. And, uh, she, uh, she smiles warmly at Novak and says, uh, she's got she's got a, a European accent, something maybe Eastern European, um, uh, which I'm not going to duplicate because, as we know, I don't do accents very well at all. Uh, she says, uh, uh, "Detective Novak, it's so very nice to see you again." Novak kind of cuts his eyes at you for a moment. Uh, says, uh, uh, "Helga, it's it's." Uh, Great to see you. I see you're still here at the cab company. And she she kind of shrugs and says, what else would I do? And she she stands up and kind of leans over the counter and says, so how can I help you today, detective? Uh, Novak pops out the picture of the, of the, the blown up picture you guys have and says, uh, this is one of yours, isn't it? She was like, well, yes, it is, of course. Um, oh, shit. Hold on one second, guys. I got work calling me. Give me one moment. I'm sorry. Hello? Give me a... a text message. Okay, sorry about that. Um, uh, he says, well, we uh, we need to know um, we need to know where this cab was. Uh, he gives her the time of the um, the uh, of the shooting. Uh, we need to know where this cab was and who this was they picked up and where they took her. And at that, she her smile fades a little bit and she kind of straightens up and she says, detective, you know, this is, uh, you, you know, that this is company, uh, proprietary information. I can't give up information on our cabs and their clients. Um, well, you can, if it's a murder investigation, she, uh, she says a murder investigation. Well, I'm really not supposed to unless you have a warrant or uh, go ahead and make a manipulation roll and I'll give you advantage just counting for the fact that Novak's there working with you. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Advantage and manipulation. There we go. Whoops. <laughs> I'll push it. All right. Uh, so then I select them. Whoops. Wait, that didn't. No, it I don't didn't. know what I hit. Yeah, I hit the push button, and then on the on the dice matrix, um, you select the. Yeah, you just hit select all, I believe. There you so, go. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Did you do that or did I do that? I think, I I think did you that. did that. Okay, so but I was ahead. mousing over it right when you did it. That's so okay. It felt so like I did it, but I, I guess you did it. Yeah, go ahead and hit the push button and hit all. We'll ignore the roll. I okay. Happen. So I, can I go back and do it or do yeah, I? Yeah, just scroll yeah. up um, on okay. the chat and hit push. Hit it should all. work. There you go. Okay. Still no successes. That's it for me. She, uh, yeah, she, she, uh, she kind of crosses her arms and says, I, I, I really can't allow, 
I really can't allow access uh, to that information uh, unless uh, you know unless you have a warrant or something else that I could. Novak, <laughs> Novak looks at you in size, uh, and uh, he reaches into his uh, into his wallet and uh, starts to pull out some 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 money. And uh, mechanically speaking, what he's basically doing is he is going to use a chin yen point. So I'm going to drop his chin yen points down to five. And he's going to offer her cash, essentially, to do it. So mechanically, that's what's happening. When you look at your character sheet down at the bottom, you have chin yen points, which is a, a measure of a measure of a mix of wealth and uh, uh, things you have access to that you might could use to to buy major purchases or or bribe somebody with that type of thing. Do you want to take it off my sheet so he doesn't? You can do that. So that's using his resource. Yeah, I'll just I'll take it. All right, so I'll put it back on his. Put him back up. All right, perfect. That's fine. Um, she uh, she takes the cash, kind of folds it and slides it into her blouse somewhere, uh, and uh, she says, "You know, Detective Novak." Uh, we could have just gone to that the beginning to, to begin with. It would have been a lot easier. Uh, either that, or I'm still waiting for you to take me out on a drink, take me out for a drink. <laughs> um, so she. Uh, I'll say out loud. Come on, Novak. That's the least you could do. <laughs> he he's he's given you a look that indicates that you might pay for that later. <laughs> <laughs> um. And now I'm trying to find my location, and I lost it again. I wish this was an outback order. There's got to be an easier way. Does Control F work in this? Let's find out. Oh, look, Control F works. That's wonderful. What does Control F do? Um, I, Search. it searches your page for whatever you type into it. Oh. I just didn't know Control F would work in Roll Twenty. Oh, um, that's uh, yeah. Okay. I thought there was something special. In... All right. Yeah. So he says. Um, she says, uh, "Yeah, the uh, the the uh, driver you want to talk about is Earl. Uh, you talk to is named Earl. He's actually here. He's uh, he's around back changing a tire on the cab, actually. Um, so you can and she points. She says you can go right through there uh, to the uh, to the parking area. He and uh, he'll talk to you. I'm sure he's a nice guy. Well, can she tell us where the cab dropped off the passenger?" In question, um, she punches it up on her terminal, and she says, uh, "Yeah, uh, the fare started outside Snake Pit, and all the way up in Sector One, and he brought her all the way. Um, oh, right around the corner, dropped her off in Animoid Row." Okay, thanks. Let's go talk to this guy. What was his name? Miles? No. Earl. Earl. Uh, so uh, heading heading through the door indicated, you, you come into a garage, and there's a handful of these big blocky uh, orange cabs, um, and you uh, obviously you've got the picture so you know which one you're looking for. Earl's, uh, Earl's not a big guy. He's probably 5'2", five 5'3", foot five foot little thick around the middle, uh, balding. Uh, with uh, with short cut dark hair, gray at the edges, uh, but yeah, he's got the he's got the car up on a lift and he's uh, he's pulling a wheel off it that's got a flat tire. As you approach him, he uh, sets it down gently and says, uh, um, "You gentlemen really shouldn't be back here, you know. I think it's employees only." We will show him our badges. He goes, oh, excuse me. I, I didn't mean nothing by it. That's all right. Are you Earl? He goes, yeah. Yeah, I'm Earl. What can I do We've for you? Got a couple of quick questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, nah, shoot. What you got? You picked up a fare on, I don't know the date, but I'll say the date. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, outside the snake pit, and then I'll show him the picture of the girl getting in this cab. 
He goes, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember her. Um, pretty girl, kind of young in her 20s, dark hair, shoulder that's length. The one. Yeah. That's the one. Can yeah. you tell me where uh, where you took her? Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was it was a pretty big uh, it was a pretty big fair. She wanted me to take her all the way to Animoid Row. Um, it was uh, I kind of I kind of hit her. You know, look, it's it's a it's a long way, so you know you got to have money. Um, but she. Uh, she 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 threw a little bit of cash said she'd pay the rest when she got here i, I didn't want to push her that hard she was uh she was upset about something i i don't know and she had a she had a gun so i really wasn't trying to cause any trouble how do you know she had a gun because i saw the handle of it it was in a she had a kind of a, a she had a brown bag under her arm kind of a, a, a kind of a, <laughs> a courier bag or satchel something like that and i i saw the handle of it how do you know she was upset? She, uh, well, she was crying for one, but she and she was really nervous. What did you guys talk about? Uh, we didn't talk about nothing. I, I tried asking her if she needed me to call anybody or if she needed some help, or and she all she'd say is just take me to Animoid Row, and I didn't want to push it. So it was a, uh, it was a, a good few hours in sir in silence. So uh, she didn't uh, say uh, where on Animoid Row she was going? No, as soon as I got there, she said, this is good, and I let her out. And then can she you just... tell us exactly where you let her out? Yeah, I can I can tell you. It was on, it was on uh, give me one second, let me pull that. Do, 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 do. There we go. Oh, boy. Um, wow. Beautifully well done. So much detail. Sometimes it's hard to figure out what you're doing. Um, uh, yeah, it was. Um, it was on the the. It was on the southern end. I let her out at the southern end, right by the fish lady place. Fish lady place. And she she got out and kind of just. She just walked into the crowds. You know, that place is always busy down there. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. Which way was she going? Uh, north? She headed up north. East? Yeah, I let up her out north? on the southern end. She went up north. She was heading right. north up the street. Did she uh, happen to mention a little girl? No, she didn't say anything. Any chance she left anything in your cab? No. No, I mean, this is it right here. I After that... After that uh, that fair, I got the flat tire. I brought back and put in. Then I went home, got some sleep, and came back. I'm, first thing I'm doing is changing the tire. So you can look inside if you want. Sure. All right. Thanks. So he hits the lift and he lowers it down so that you guys can um, open the door. And uh, there's an empty back seat. All right. Didn't really expect to find anything. Just had to look. Yeah. Cover your bases. A cop procedural, after all, right? Imagine so. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Okay. All right. He says that yeah. if that's all you got. I'm going to get this thing back on here. And he, he, all right, Earl. Thanks a lot, man. He goes, Hey, no problem. Give him, yeah. give him the card if you see her again. Give us a call. Please don't tell her you spoke to us. Uh, uh, not a problem. Um, a lot of people in this city would be. Kind of surprising if I came across her again, but I got you. I will get on the IKEA and call the other guys. All right. Say so we're at Metro. We got a lead. Um, her last known. Uh, she t she took the cab to Animoid Row. Dropped off at the southern end. Was walking north. Maybe somebody there saw her. And uh, at that point, I think that Fenna and Percival are probably um, just coming back into Sector 5 because she's dropping him off at the LAPD Tower. So this is really before he started his tech searches because um, uh, uh, she's on her way to um, to the, the spaceport. So, uh, you know, just from a timeline of events standpoint. Hello. 
as Becker kind of relays that to us, I'll mention to him that Tyrell did tell us that there was a memory of Leah that she stole, that she saw where Leah met Styles on Animoid Row uh, with the older gentleman. So Animoid Row keeps on popping up in this investigation. So that might very well be where everything converges. Did you learn like where specifically on Animoid Row she might be interested in going? We did not get an address, no. Like, uh, I mean, is there a clue in there somewhere where she might be going? No, the only the only thing that Ty that that Lilith Tyrell told you guys was that um, that uh, it seemed she remembered seeing just as she was scanning through the memories, she remembered seeing um, uh, Leah meeting with Styles a couple times and once in the presence of a, of an older gentleman in his 70s. She remembered this while looking through her memories? Or she learned this while looking through her memories? Before she erased it all, yeah, during Before the recalibration. She erased it yep. So, I guess Styles wasn't well, we didn't specifically ask Styles about Leah. We asked him about the dancer. Actually, you did, and she said mm -hmm. that he said that she saw Leah and Sandor in the bar. Um, I but he had never seen them before. So he lied about that. So Styles is back on the menu, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, before I, before I, uh, hop over to, um, well, and that was Metro Cab, and you guys had, well, I, if you've got something else you want to do in Sector 5, I'll certainly let you, um, but I'll come back to it in a moment. Um, before I hop over to Fena, um, on her long trip down to the, to the, uh, uh, the, uh, spaceport, did Percival have anything else he wanted to look up while he was at the mainframe? Yeah, so... Um... Marty, may I make a quick interjection? Yeah. I apologize for interrupting you, you both, but uh, I just want to remind you, I messaged you about, I got a, a washer dryer coming in here. Oh, yeah. I'm expecting it any minute, so... Oh, I'm thinking well. probably 1 o'clock will be the latest I can play. All right. Well, well it's almost one thirty Eastern, and we haven't had any lunch, so... Um, yeah, let's make this quick. Okay. So, um, Percival um, took that second page, put a bunch of the words in, and popped up. Uh, um, now, let's be clear. I just Googled it. <laughs> so... I have to assume Percival doesn't really need a tech role to pop up to find something that this prominent. That's your call. No, I, I think that's fair. Okay. Especially with all the computing power you have available to you. Plus, I had a success on a previous one. So this is this is from the letters of William Blake. Um, so I popped that up, and uh, that whole second page shows up and um what's interesting is um some reference um now i need to look at the page again which handout was that handout p yeah all right my hands are labored day or night now that's the that is the page we have, but not the missing page. Or is that the missing page? I'm confused. No, handout P is the missing page. It's the missing page. Okay. So. Let 
this reference that I'm finding to, from the letters of William Blake let's see there it starts kind of in the middle my hands are labored day and night and ease comes never in my sight and he let's see my wife has no indulgence given except what comes to her from heaven um, so there's a reference to another son which is uh, Los in a spiritual form. There's another reference in here. When I had, but here's the interesting thing. When I had my defiance given, the sun stood trembling in heaven. The moon that glowed remote below became leprous of and white as snow. And every soul of man, here's the interesting part. Every soul of man on earth felt affliction and sorrow and sickness and death. Los flamed my path and the sun was hot with the bow, bows of my mind and the arrows of thought, which is a reference to Milton. Um, my bowstring fierce with ardor breathes. My but none arrow of that is in the actual handout. It's so no, the other if, you, if you this is what that's this is what you find out if you do the research. Right, but that's not the part she took. I know, but um, what's that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is yes, we might be able to glean something from before, but it's really striking that here we are. She's worried. Here we are. That we're worried that she might have gone to the anti-replicant guys right and here are these this line that says and every soul of man on earth felt affliction and sorrow and sickness and death doesn't that it sounds um anyway it sounds almost like uh some kind of harbinger but at any rate that's all i found letters of william blake and um and that passage, I'm not sure if we just read, I don't know. I got to do some more thinking about this, about this part that she tore out. What if this part just by itself has some special meaning to her based on her memories, her daughter's memory or whatever. So I don't think there's anything more Percival can do here. There's a lot of thinking of, uh, uh, analysis that needs to go on to this see what we got going on i'm looking at my notes and i can't think of anything else i want to dig into daniel was a dead end or for that matter i mean because you guys all have communication with each other for that matter if um anyone else in the squad is anything they want percival to look into while he's got access to the mainframe yeah Because looking at my notes, I don't think there's anything else. I think, I don't know. Anyway, I'd say that that's something I can think about offline for what Percival does next. Because um, you've still got Fena going to the spaceport. Right. And then, all right, so why don't you do that? Well, why don't we... Um... Unless we want to go ahead and break here before we launch into something that could take some time. Why don't we do that? If Fenna's going to take a little time, then let's uh, let's call it a day because I'm starving. Yeah, so when we come back next week, we'll start with Fenna uh, at the LAX spaceport. And then we will circle back around to Olsen, Backer, and Willem Novak for whatever else they want to do in Sector 5, because certainly the Metro Cab didn't take a whole shift uh, to investigate, because you were already and everybody, right there. And everybody remember Percival's at HQ with all the computing power if there's something that needs to be looked up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Does that sound good? Yep, sounds good. All right, guys. Thanks for playing. Um, sorry Thank I was so late. Um, no problem. 
which is was fun. All right, cool. We'll um, we'll. My brain hurts. <laughs> 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 yeah, me so too. <laughs> you guys can you guys can launch the game at any time, right? I don't have to have the game launched. You guys can Correct. literally come right back to it. Yeah, this morning that's how it was. Yeah, okay. Um, it wasn't up, but you could just launch it. it doesn't matter. So I I I'm I'm having visions of my head of uh, the three of you coming back to this in random times and uh, uh, maybe even putting together your own. Uh, your own case board at home with strings going across it, connecting to different things. So that, that would require effort. Well, that's true. So, all right, guys. Look at your styles. All right, you guys. Up in this. You guys have a good week. All right, you guys. Take care, man. See you soon. Bye.